My name is Shelby Bills, and I am the co-owner and managing partner of Graber & Company Salon and Day Spa. I also own Gray Salon and am the co-founder of um, Graber Academy. I am the mom of two amazing, beautiful humans, Kai. My son just turned 13, so that's pretty wild. We're on a new ride. <laughs> and my daughter, Kira, who is 10, and we're just living the dream over here. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the chaotic dream, but it's the mm -hmm. one that most of us entrepreneurs are like, okay, we totally signed up for this. We got this. <laughs> <laughs> right? Did we? Did we sign up for this? Yes. We did. <laughs> we did. Intentionally. People told us, I know people told me when before I became an entrepreneur that this was the hardest thing I would ever do. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know that I believed them, but I certainly believe them now. <laughs> Right? We're learning every, I always say I'm face planning forward all the time. <laughs> always, always. So how, because I know that Graber & Company has been in, uh, in business for a really long time. Um, so tell us, tell me how you got involved with them. Oh my goodness, yes. So we're celebrating our 55, 55th year in business this month. So Graber & Company has been around for five decades, a really long time. I was fortunate enough to um, start in guest care, so customer service there when I was 19 and I was going to college at Boise State and really just move up with the company um, over the next few years. And I worked with Aveda, so salons were in my network and I was learning about the salon and spa industry. And then um, I bought out my boss when I was 25 and been doing this for about 12 years of business ownership. So that's kind of how I got into it, got started. Love the industry. I love the beauty and wellness industry. I love people even more. So I'm definitely a people person. And yeah, that's how I got started. That's awesome. So did you, I, I, you said you started as guest services. Did you, uh, do you have your cosmetology license? Did you work on the floor or has it always been the business side of things? Yeah, so I am not licensed. My background is in business marketing and management. Um, I, on purpose and intentionally, don't do hair. I empower people. I lead people. I create teams and cultures, and I just happen to do it in the salon and spa world. Um, so, yeah, it's really interesting. It's a different dynamic. Most, most salon owners um, have either done hair or worked in the spa, and they know that piece of the business. And I came from the whole other side of the team, building the teams, creating the culture, working with the customers and developing the business and then also helping the technical end kind of lead and empower them in that way. When I had the antique shop, after a while, online selling started, you know, people were buying stuff on eBay and all that kind of thing. So I started selling on eBay, antiques and stuff like that. That was pretty cool. I did really good. And then the market in 2008, you know, when that all happened, um, crashed. And I said, you know what, let's close this. We're spending way more than we need to, and people aren't coming in anymore. So anyways, we closed. Um, I don't know how long. I tried selling my thing online for a little while, but um, I, I don't remember anything, so I really can't tell you. Um, my girlfriend started selling stuff online. And she's like, you know, you should do this because you love the stuff. And so, okay, so I started doing that. And then three years ago when my son passed away, you know, we were on the couch for a year. Nothing. Well, anyway, so I thought, I'll just go on Facebook. You know, I was here and there. I like to watch my family. Uh, my nieces and nephews have their children grow up now, and I get to see that because they're not close anymore um so scrolling through i found amazon's program and i thought i know how to sell them <laughs> and um because i needed something to keep me busy and keep me um focused on one thing and that was being happy coming back so <laughs> So, selling funny things and sarcastic things is my stuff. Oh my god, he's a comedian. And um, you couldn't talk to him without him doing something, you know, crazy and dumb and making fun of you or whatever. It was hilarious. And my oldest daughter and him, they're three years apart. When those two got together, it was a comedy show. 
for real. And um, I know that you feel like this. Keeping other people in. You know, making them laugh in style. So, that's what I do. I try. <laughs> You do an excellent job. I definitely find joy in going to your online store on a regular basis, uh, buying probably way more than I need to on a regular basis. Um, it just, you know, for for very much some of the same reasons, you know, we, we've talked about this and and we both lost one of our children, so we understand that that pain, and we also understand that sometimes laughter really is the best medicine. So finding opportunities to to giggle and laugh, and um, you know, kind of be snarky is yeah. is kind of our one of our coping mechanisms uh and i think the fact that you have figured out how to turn that into a business um and support yourself with that is incredible i'm 33 years old in caldwell idaho i've lived in idaho for 13 years i was born and raised in denver i have get ready for it seven children i always have to give people a minute because they're like what yes i have seven children i birthed them all i carried them all trust me i did i have the spanx collection to prove it to hold everything in <laughs> um, they i have two girls from my first marriage that my current husband has adopted and i have five boys that are biologically my husband's we had twins that took us by surprise we thought we were done with five found out we were pregnant i guess almost two years ago now and didn't find out until our second ultrasound that it was twins. Both yeah. held out hope that we'd get a baby girl, but we got two amazing baby boys, which is fine. It's very peaceful in my house right now because the twins are at daycare and the big kids are at school and I bribed the four-year-old who didn't want to go to daycare with Roblox time. I'm like, Here, here's mommy's phone, play Roblox, be quiet for one hour, just one. So we'll right. see, we'll see how long until he makes an appearance. <laughs> that but, sounds fine. awesome. I love to do all the things. So I am very involved in network marketing. I have my own little Plexus supplement business that I love. I've done that for the last six years. The products changed my life and my health. And they actually just kind of showed me what I was capable of when my business started taking off. I am going to be competing for Mrs. Idaho for the third time. I've competed, I competed two years in a row. Uh, the second time I competed, I was actually eight weeks pregnant. We didn't know it was twins yet, but I was so sick. I powered through won some serious awards, loved it, took a year off because twins, and we'll be competing as Mrs. Caldwell in June of next year. I'm super, super stoked to be back with my girls. I can't wait. It was one of the most life-changing experiences I've had. Another one of those moments that I realized, hey, I'm a hot mess. I'm the conductor all aboard the Hot Mess Express, but I can still do the thing. Even, even when life is crazy, even when I was like legit throwing up 20 times a day, I still powered through and was able to do it. And it just really has given me, it's really one of those outer body experiences where you, where you can see yourself the way other people see you. So even on those insecure days, even on those down on yourself days, I just kind of look back and remember, hey, look at these amazing friends I made with amazing women. And, Somehow I managed to just connect to amazing women like Wendy who are all about empowerment and positivity and laughing through life's bull crap. And yeah, that's just, that's just who I am. I'm a mom, I'm a wife. Oh, and I'm a bartender now <laughs> because why not? Why not add what? to being now I'm bartending over at my favorite restaurant because let's be honest, mama needs to get out of the house after six months of quarantine and the kids being home. <laughs> Adult interaction. I told my husband, I was like, my brain is turning, turning to mush. Somehow trying to like homeschool my kids made me dumber. I don't know yes. how that happened, but it for sure, for sure made me dumber. So it's really, really nice to have this three night a week outlet where I get to socialize, be an adult, use my brain again and make cash. Who doesn't, who doesn't love a little bit of cash? Right. So I think, I think that's it. <laughs> I mean, there's I don't know if that's enough, Ashley. Maybe we should find you a hobby. I don't, yeah, I don't think I have enough going on in my life. I don't. A business, a, a part-time job that's almost become full-time and seven kids. Don't worry, my house is a mess, guys. 
before you sit here and think like, oh crap, no, my house is, it's a disaster. Like my laundry is everywhere. We live out of laundry. It's fine. It's fine. Eventually I'll just hire someone to do it for me. Maybe. <laughs> I love it. I love that you are just totally honest and real because God forbid anyone thought that one of us had all of our shit together. Right, like, That's yeah, not a I thing. I don't think I have any of my shit together. I'm a counselor turned coach. Uh, I have discovered that my style is so much more engaging and dynamic than I can get away with as a therapist. So um, that's how I got from counseling to coaching. Um, I am kind of an exercise junkie. So when I'm not exercising, I'm doing nothing. Like I can sit around and just pet my cat and that's it for hours. Um, so yeah, if that's me, I'm just kind of a high energy, let's get down to business and then get on with it kind of girl. Oh, I love that. I love that. So you originally got into counseling kind of what led you in that direction to begin with? Yeah, uh, so working with just understanding human nature and loving social psychology has always just been second nature to me. So, you know, really looking at human behavior and wondering why is it like that and what drives people this way and how do you explain this? That's just something that has always just come really natural. Uh, so doing that as a therapist was just a, a perfect fit. You know, what's interesting is that I found over the years that people who come to counseling want a diagnosis and a treatment plan. They don't want to be therapized. So um, <laughs> they just need someone they trust to help them talk through hard times. And that doesn't require that I give you any kind of diagnosis. So coaching works great. Right. Yeah. And I, I find that that really interesting that you say that because I um, have definitely been involved in counseling myself. Uh, throughout the years for various different things. Um, and I I never felt like I wanted the other person to fix me. I mm -hmm. felt like I need that person to bounce ideas off of, make sure that I I'm not losing my mind, that that what I'm that what I think is going on is within the realm of reality, that I'm not overreacting, kind of helping me figure out as I grew mm -hmm. Um, you know, in, in my knowledge base that those, that I could learn how to set new boundaries based mm -hmm. on new information, new experiences. Um, so I, I love that you kind of take it from that, you know, that approach of, you know, I don't, I'm not here to fix you or diagnose you. I'm here to help mm -hmm. you have the conversations basically with yourself that you just yeah. don't, don't know how to work through everything was going amazing until you know I got the news I got I had some really weird uh, things that started going on in my body I started getting this cough and then um, my like on the base of my neck it's it started it just like popped out yeah and I didn't you know I didn't think anything about that um, until I went to a routine dermatology appointment and she looked at that and she said, uh, we're not doing anything today. You need to get to the ER. And I remember bursting out crying in her office. And she's like, I'm sorry, I don't mean to put fear in you, but um, that's your lymph node and that's, that's, not, that's not good. So, yeah. yeah, so it took me um, about a week actually to get, to get a CT scan. And because they were so, you know, that's right when COVID was breaking out. Oh, yeah. And they were just kind of all they seemed to care about. So, but I got, I ended up getting a CT scan. They ordered it from the, the, the base of the neck up. And I was getting, I, I had the iodine with contrast injected in me. I went to go get dressed and um, there was a knock on the door and the tech was like, you know, hey, um, we're going to get orders from a doctor to do a full body scan. Do you mind uh, putting back the gown and coming back out? So I was like, okay. So obviously they saw that my whole lymph node was lit up with cancer. Um, and so, you know, I came back out and, you know, did the scan and then, you know, got dressed and I came back out and the text back was turned away from me when I came out and I said, Hey, you know, so now what? And she took a little, a little while turning around but when she did her cheeks were just she just had tears streaming down her face and I was like oh are you okay and she said 
yeah. And she goes, we'll call you. And I'm like, are you okay? And she just like, she wouldn't really talk to me. And um, she just kept saying she would, she would call me or they would call me or something like that. So she obviously knew the news. Um, and so probably about an hour later is when I got the call and it's the call that nobody and ever wants to get. And it was just shocking news, but they said, um, you have ovarian cancer, your lungs are filled with fluid and you need to get to the ER. Wow. And I, I, I think I screamed actually. Um, and it probably had my first panic attack. And so that was, um, yeah, that was March 19th of 2020. Wow. So, yeah. Really Pretty shocking. Incredible. Pretty incredible. So yeah. what, what, I mean, what do you mentally, what do you, I know what you physically do next. You do whatever they tell you to do, but mentally, where was your head at at that point? Oh my gosh. It was, well, so going back to that moment, you know, I called my mom. I actually screamed. I'm like, mom, they say I have ovarian cancer. And she was like, yeah, yeah. Okay. And she was just completely calm. And so we're, we're both people of faith, but she just had like this total faith that I feel like the Lord prepared her for this moment. Um, because she's never let up with her faith. She's only like taken God at his word and fought for me in prayer and, um, just, yeah, to God at his word. And so she and my husband met me at the hospital with my daughter. And um, again, COVID was breaking out. So they wouldn't let my family members in. Um, they soon staged it at stage four because it had metastasized everywhere in my body. But nobody told me that. And so everybody treated me like I was end of life. And so then they let my husband in. Oh so, God. yeah. So then they referred me to a, a conventional oncologist. And you know, he said I needed to have surgery right away, remove, um, all my ovaries, all my, you know, all my stuff. And, um, so we scheduled the surgery and I had major complications. So that following week, um, I ended up having two bowel obstructions. That was, it was actually hell. Um, and then, you know, I had a friend that used to work for him and she actually just told me this recently. So 10 months later, um, she said that he had told her that when he opened up my stomach and saw all the cancer, he told her I wasn't going to make it. Mm. So I'm, I know that I'm a walking miracle and I know that Jesus has saved my life for a purpose and I will share his story. Cause this is really his story all day long with anybody that will listen. Um, I am more or less a Boise native. I like to call myself a Boise native. And um, I have a family here in Boise. I've got two little boys um, married to a really great man. And I, yes, have, um, I'm an entrepreneur at heart. That is true. Um, I think that once you become an entrepreneur, like your brain gets wired differently. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then you just like can't stay away from businesses. Um, but I started and ran an event company in the Boise area called Soundwave Events. Um, also started and ran and then sold to Wendy, a transaction coordinating company in the real estate industry. Um, and that was a great experience too. And currently I have transitioned um, out of my business into a position at Silver Creek Realty um, doing business development for the brokerage. So um, doing some entrepreneurship type things for a business that's not mine, which is kind of a new adventure. Yeah, yeah, it's always it's always interesting to see that transition happen. I mean, I've kind of been, you know, in corporate America and then out again and a little bit back in, but most of my journey has been entrepreneurial. Even even part of that, um, I worked like for the school district for a while because I was a little paranoid about how my children were going to do in public school, so I felt right. like I should helicopter. Uh, into their lives through working at the school. <laughs> yeah, um, but Love it. so you do you do a little bit of all the things, I think. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's so true. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So, what made you want to go into business development for someone else's company? You know what? So, that is a bigger question than just one answer. I think so. Um, running my own company is an amazing experience. I mean, truly, it's made me who I am. There is no part of Soundwave that isn't so wrapped up in my soul. And just the, just, you know, 
equipping me with so much resiliency and skills and relationships and connections. Um, I, I don't know how to say this in a nice way. I think I got bored. I think I got bored. So, um, you know, running this company, it's been great, but I'm definitely like, okay, what can I do? How can I make this better? How can I make this run smoothly? And I got to a point where I, I kind of peaked. Like I got to a place where I was like, okay, I, I've done what I can do here. Like now it's time for someone else to do some work in this company. And my husband actually still owns a sound wave. Technically I still own it too, but, um, <laughs> but I stepped down earlier this year to come to Silver Creek. And, you know, I remember two years ago, um, just really like going inside of myself and saying like, I'm ready for something new. I'm ready for something new, but it wasn't time. And that's the answer I got. It's not time. And so I said, okay, well, when it's time, let's make it really obvious. And so earlier this year when um, the owner at Silver Creek reached out to me and he said, listen, your name keeps coming to my mind. And I don't know why, but I have this position um, opening up and I, I just keep thinking of you. So I know you run a business, so I don't even know why I'm calling you, but are you interested? And it was this moment like, I think the door's opening. I think I just have to walk through it. Um, and I you know, moved from one small business um, ultimately to another small business, another local company. Uh -huh. And um, I, I was just excited to be able to contribute my skills in a different way. And um, also really excited to transition back to an industry that I know a lot about, um, but hadn't worked. I've worked somewhat actively in real estate, but not super actively in real estate. Um, so to be able to combine like, you know, these two parts of my life um, together was really exciting. That is so awesome. So awesome. I love that you are able to go, hmm, there's something not right. Everything is great. Don't get me wrong. But I feel like there's something else that needs to be brewing. And that's such a hard place to come from or be in because um, you feel, uh, at least for me, I had you know, when, when I've really wanted to transition moving, you know, not necessarily of real estate, but moving to some type of coaching where I could mentor and help others, uh, yeah. do what, do what I've been able to do. You know, it, it almost feels ungrateful there for a minute. You're like, Oh, why can't I just be happy and satisfied with, with all of the success that I've already built? So. Yep, I've totally had that feeling so many times. Like, I have this amazing company. I'm surrounded by the most incredible people who I love. Like, they're my people, you know? And I'm like, why, yeah, why am I not just content to just keep showing up and keep working hard and keep doing good things? Like, um, but yeah, I think sometimes our soul just, like, just wants to take us somewhere else. Like, I don't know. There's, like, a pull. Yeah. But, and I think it is the epitome of what an entrepreneur is always looking for. You know, they're always looking to be better, do better, know better. And anytime we can transition from one position to another, there's always that opportunity for growth. So I think it's just something that you either have or you don't, you know, that, that drive right. and that curiosity. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's so true. And exactly <laughs> like what I have been looking for. Yeah. Thank you so much for tuning in to the My Wim Life show today. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a moment of the goodness.